Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Niharika Jha and today we will be talking about wood slam in dermatology. Before moving any further, I would like to inform you about Derma Coaching. So Derma Coaching is an online teaching platform for those students who are pursuing their post-graduation in the subject of dermatology. And we have very informative videos on important topics in dermatology such as basic dermatology, immunobulous disorders, Papillus format disorders, CTDs, leprosy, and FTD. If any one of you is interested in buying any of these modules or any one particular lecture, you can connect to us by sending an email at these particular email IDs. Now let us move further and discuss about topic proper, which is Wood Lab. So Wood Lab was invented by Robert Wood in the year 1903. How does it work? So wood lamp, it contains two things. It contains a high pressure mercury arc and a filter. This mercury arc, it emits a UV radiation, long wave UV radiation, which is also known as the black light. The filter, it is made up of barium silicate along with 9% nickel oxide, and this filter is known as the Bush filter. The filter, it, what is the purpose of the filter? Basically, it blocks all the light rays except for those which fall in between the wavelength of 320 to 400 nanometer with the peak being at 365 nanometer. So what we see under the wood lamp is basically the fluorescence. And how is this fluorescence created? So when the tissue absorbs this particular UV radiation, and in return, it emits a radiation of a longer wavelength, usually the visible light, then we see it as fluorescent. So basically what is happening, there's a wood lamp and the mercury arc, it is emitting a long wavelength uh, UV radiation. What is the purpose of the filter? It is allowing only those light rays uh, which fall in between the wavelength of 320 to 400 nanometer. This is being absorbed by the tissue and then it further emits a radiation of a longer wavelength, usually the visible light. This is how a wood lamp looks like. Before using a wood lamp, we should be aware of certain tips and tricks. And uh, after knowing uh, these things only, we should be using a wood lamp. So what are these tips and tricks? The lamp should be ideally be allowed to warm up for around one minute prior to you, prior to its use. The examination should be carried out in a perfectly dark uh, room. The examining should get adapted to the dark prior to the examination. The light source should be kept at a distance of around 4 to 5 inches from the lesion. Another two important points, we should avoid washing the area prior to the examination because sometimes the pigments they are water soluble and if they get diluted, then we can uh, you know, get a false negative result. Similarly, if the patient has applied some topical medications over the lesion, then it can give us then it can give us a false positive result. For example, petroleum can give us a bluish or a purplish colored uh, fluorescence, and salicylic acid emits a green colored fluorescence. So if the patient has applied some topical medications, ideally it should be removed or wiped off prior to the examination. Now let us learn the various applications of wood lamp. So wood lamp in dermatology can be used in diagnosis and it can be used in the diagnosis of superficial fungal infections. You can capitalize the disease which, uh, which can be diagnosed with the help of wood lamp. So sometimes we get confused whether it is tinea capitis or whether it is alopecia areata. So tinea capitis caused by the fungi of the microscopic genus will emit a bluish green color. So not only it will help us in diagnosing, it will help us in, you know, differentiating it from alopecia areata. And also it helps us in mask screening. Particularly in schools, we can use this particular instrument to screen various students for tinea capitis. Also, it will help us to assess the length and response to the treatment. So a patient with tinea capitis will show a positive fluorescence at the beginning of the treatment and it should, the fluorescence should turn negative by the end of the treatment. So this is how it can be used in uh, diagnosing as well as assessing the length of the treatment and help us in differentiating tinea capitis from other pro probable differential diagnosis. This is a picture. I've mentioned the source. So this is a patient of tinea capitis and we can see that uh, a bluish green colored fluorescence can be seen 
in this particular patient. Now, bacterial infections. So, pseudomonas infections are the bacterial infections uh, which can be diagnosed using wood flap. What is the basis? Basically, pseudomonas, it produces a pigment which is known as bioburden of fluorescence. This particular pigment it shows a green, green fluorescence under the wood flap. But this fluorescence is seen when the colony count exceeds more than 105 per centimeter per It cannot detect very minor kind of infection, but when there is a good colony count, it can be uh, directly diagnosed with the help of wood flap. Why it is helpful? It is helpful because we can detect pseudomonal infection early in critical cases of, uh, you know, uh, HS, PEN or patients of PEM figures or burn patients. So these are the patients which can easily develop pseudomonal infection. The culture report might take a few days to come, but with the help of WhatsApp, we can make an, make an early diagnosis and start the patient on antibiotics earlier. This is a patient who is having pseudomonal green nail and uh, uh, under the wood flap, we can see a green color fluorescence. Erythrasma is another bacterial infection which is caused by foreign bacterium and it shows a coral red fluorescence. This coral red fluorescence under the wood lamp is because of a water soluble treatment which is known as the coprobarfyrin T, which is produced by the foreign bacteria. Now, since this pigment is body soluble, we should be careful that uh, the lesions should not be washed prior to the examination, or else it, uh, we might not be able to see the beautiful coral red uh, fluorescence, which is emitted by polynibacteria. And this is how a patient with erythrasma uh, will show coral red fluorescence under both lab. Similarly, acne vulgaris, it is a simple disease to diagnose. But both lamp can help us in detecting coprophyllin, which is uh, the major porphyrin produced by BFS, and it gives an orange red color fluorescence with the comedons, which are inhabited by BFS. Pigmentary disorders. Now, particularly, pigmentary disorders can be divided into two types: the hypopigmentary and the hyperpigmentary types of disorders. Hypopigmentary disorders are the depigmentary disorders. Basically, the pre vitiligo or vitiligo or post inflammatory hypopigmentation. Basically, what happens in these patients is that there is loss of melanin from the epidermis. So, there is hardly any epidermal melanin. And the fluorescence that we see is basically the autofluorescence of the dermal collagen because of the window which is being created because of the absence of the melanin in the epidermis. Now, when the dermal collagen it shows the sort of fluorescence, the white lesion becomes all the more white. It will become bright white in color, and that can help us in differentiating um, pre vitiligo or vitiligo or post inflammatory hypopigmentation from other disorders which are hypopigmented. For example, pityasis versicolor, or might be uh, lesions of leprosy, or PKDL, or Ashley's Matthews. So we can differentiate between all these things using both lab. Hyperpigmentary disorder, it can help us in deciding where the melanin is actually present. So with the help of wood clam, we can differentiate melasma into or we can divide melasma into three types, the epidermal, dermal, or the mixed type. And based on the basis of where the melanin is deposited, we can tell the patient about the prognosis of the disease. So we know that the epidermal melasma it responds better, while the dermal melasma, the response is not as good to the treatment. So that is how we can use both lamp in classifying melasma and understanding the prognosis of the melasma to the treatment. Then porphyria, wood uh, lamp can be used in the detection of the excesses, uh, excessive uh, porphyrins in the teeth, urine, or the food samples. This is a picture of a patient of porphyria, porphyria pitania tarda, and it shows a pink to red color fluorescence. So these are the various diseases in which wood lamp can be put to use in dermatology. I hope that you liked today's class. And if you want to learn more in dermatology, please connect to us at the email IDs given in the video. Thank you.